Morning, ladies. It's been over three and a half years since my last extended photo trip beyond the Great Lakes and the relative isolation of the Door Peninsula. I was a bit overwhelmed to see how much a global pandemic had changed air travel. I was excited, but anxious in equal measure. My greatest fear, and one that I had obsessed over for months, was having to make a connection through Seattle, and that I would arrive in Fairbanks, Alaska, and my luggage would not. So, I invested in air tags to track not only my carry-on camera gear, but my checked bags that contained all the survival equipment necessary to withstand the brutal Arctic winter in remote locations for, well, hours at a time. Losing that would have been a disaster. Confident that all my equipment made it on board, at least for the first leg of my journey, I was finally able to relax as epic scenes of photographing the northern lights danced in my dreams. Seattle. Used to come to this airport a lot. Back when I you know, was a workman man. With a six-hour layover in Seattle, I booked a day pass in the club lounge, away from the cacophony of noise in the busy terminal, and then finally arrived in Fairbanks around 10 p.m. It was 26 degrees below zero. The morning brought the promise of clear skies, but that would soon change. And later that day, I would meet up with our hosts, Nick Selway and Joel Garza, along with several other photographers who had traveled from as far away as Boston and Hawaii in search of capturing the elusive Aurora Borealis and the grandeur of Alaska's wilderness, as was my intent. But first, a proper breakfast, one that included a local favorite, reindeer sausage. Mm, yeah, not a fan. Then it was back to my room to begin the ritual of fitting out for the day in what would be a relentless search for clear skies. shooting the Aurora Borealis last night. Didn't get home till 5.30 this morning, back to the hotel. So I'm just after getting up, <clears throat> taking a shower and getting dressed and putzing around with a few things here, charging batteries, that sort of thing, and it's nearly noon. We meet again in two more hours to go back out and do it again tonight. But last night, the first night, 
of course, we got to meet everybody in the group. Um, and uh, then we loaded up in big Chevy Suburbans and headed three hours south to find clear skies. So that's the thing with the Aurora Borealis. You know, they're out nearly every night, but if you don't have clear skies. So the nearest clear skies were three hours south. We drove down to uh, this pass between two mountain ranges just outside of Denali National Park and uh, kind of set up shop there for the evening. Got there about 8.30, somewhere in there. Waited a couple of hours before the aurora first started making its appearance, but it was brief in the eastern sky for maybe five, six, seven minutes at tops. Started out uh, in the eastern sky above the mountain range, um, and then kind of switched over to the western sky. So everybody kind of turned, got their gear, turned around, ran over to that side, and uh, you know started taking photos and time lapses and that sort of thing. I unfortunately did not take any video last night of either myself, you know, setting up or uh, time lapses of the aurora. And that's because I'd never seen the aurora before. This was my first time. So I didn't want to be distracted from that moment with having too much to do other than maybe capture some photographs. And so um, I was, I'd have to say nervous, excited, but nervous. And so I didn't take any video. I didn't want to be distracted this first night. So um, I did get a few shots off that uh, kind of turned out, it looks like, just judging by what I see in the back of the camera. And uh, went back in the cars after that first flare-up kind of died down. And we waited for probably two and a half hours, maybe three hours longer, um, till 1.30 in the morning. We're just getting ready to call it a night and head back and the skies lit up again starting in the east and then again to the west and then it was all over. It was in every direction except south. So um, big beautiful moon out last night, nearly a full moon, so that just illuminated the foregrounds, the mountains, some beautiful texture uh, in, the, in the mountains from the shadows, uh, the big evergreen trees, um, beautifully silhouetted and I was actually shooting at ISO 400 f2.8 in about a four second exposure for most of my shots, uh, which is, you know, a very bright night. I was enthralled with being able to see uh, the spectacle for the first time, but, you know, trying to translate that onto a digital camera, you, you can't you can't comprehend the magnitude of it or um, just the the awesome spectacle of it all. But I tried and uh, I shot mostly with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Uh, and, you know, go back out and do it again tonight. We're heading about a couple hours north tonight, but we're going to a location that I've been looking forward to. This is, this is one of the highlights uh, tonight this location we're going to. I just hope we have clear skies and uh, a good display from the Aurora. So yeah, looking forward to today and hopefully I'll be able to show you some uh, video and some more beautiful photos after tonight's shoot. So all right, until then, take care. I awoke the following day a little disappointed for not recording video or time lapse, but content that I had spent the first night away from the rest of the group, alone, below the heavens. There's plenty to be said for just living in the moment. 
and it turns out I wouldn't have to wait long for another incredible adventure and fantastic opportunity to chronicle. This is unbelievable. It's like something out of uh, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Something right out of Dr. Seuss. Up on this pass, we're uh, along the Dalton Highway, north of Fairbanks by, I don't know, 150 miles or so. Uh, along this range and I'm eager to get to this site down here where the sun is still coming across these trees yeah before the sun dips below the mountain here it's about zero degrees out up here it was 39 in Fairbanks today unbelievable how beautiful and just crazy, fantastical <laughs> these trees are, laden with snow. Yeah, I gotta hurry. <laughs> the thing we've been battling here, cloud cover. Happened to drive hundreds and hundreds of miles just to find clear skies. So it's supposed to be cloudy mostly for the rest of the week too. So. Gorgeous, gorgeous, <laughs> can't get over this. So I've been kind of running and gunning here, walking down this lane with my tripod, looking for compositions as I go and not staying on one composition too long, trying to get some kind of starburst effects through the, through the uh, trees here. And now the light, because the sun is getting real low, the light's getting really soft. And I have this wonderful composition here of these two goofy looking, three goofy looking, I guess, <laughs> Dr. Seuss trees all covered with snow and they're the primary uh, composition here. The one on the left is kind of folded over itself a couple times and then the, the two to the right of it there, uh, they almost look like people. The one in the back looks like a woman wrapped with, in a babushka or a shawl over her head. Uh, and the other one kind of has a, a face about it too, uh, looking straight at us. So I'm going to change my settings here because I was shooting F-22 to get the starbursts in, uh, in those other shots. And this lens is wonderful at F-8. So I'm going to shoot at F-8 and then adjust my shutter speed accordingly. And, uh, oh, just beautiful, beautiful pink and golden light on that now, right behind that. Yeah. So I'm shooting at uh, 1 250th of a second. Aperture 8. ISO 100. And uh, shooting one half stop overexposed. a huge disappointment. I break out my drone that I went through all this time and trouble and expense to bring and uh, I go to turn it on and I get must re must fly safe requires update so I have to update the software before it's going to allow me to fly but I'm about a hundred miles from any signal here so I I don't have any. Oh what a disappointment. God. Uh, yeah, thanks, Ben. Ben over here. He's got his drone going. Say hello, Ben. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Pretty. Yeah. Oh, that's epic, isn't it? Just trying to get some stills here. Yeah. It might be over. Well, look at the dynamic range, though. Yeah. God, why didn't I update that before I left? Forgot. Too many things to remember. Forgot all about it. Sorry, guys. Technology. Here my drone sits. So we're along the famous Dalton Highway where the ice road truckers run up and down, all in oil. Oil products. 
There's another. Yeah. So some guy came by here earlier and he slowed down. He said, you guys watch out for trucks on the ice road because they come barreling through here. He said, yeah, we're aware. He said, I'll radio ahead and let everybody know that you guys are out here at mile marker nine. So that was nice of him. Kind of chasing the light down the road here as, uh, as the sun sets behind that mountain there. But it's setting faster than I can run, so I'm going to stay here. I actually just crossed the road to get another composition. If you look all the way out, you'll see. Where the sun is just catching the tops of those trees over the crest there and then the mountain in the background. So I went to take that image and I caught that just, just a second ago and uh, shot it at 250 f.8 and ISO 400. So you get everywhere you look, there's a composition. This It's insane. All right, let's see what else we can find here before we lose the sun entirely. And I think actually after the sun goes behind that mountain and sets here in about another half an hour or so, I think we're going to get some beautiful, beautiful pink light on these on these trees, soft pink light. That would, that would be fantastic. So we'll see. <laughs> we're here. Let's wait for it. So I'm sitting on this composition here. Stunning. It's otherworldly here. I found a group of trees. I can see pretty far back, probably about a hundred yards or so. Take a look here on this screen. This this is what I'm showing you here now is actually cropped in about 20% on my stills camera on my Canon 5D Mark IV um, to like a 16 by 9. Actually, the shot is a little bit bigger than this. Uh, you'll see that here when I show it to you in a few minutes. But uh, the sun has set below that mountain, but it hasn't set yet entirely. Still have a few minutes to go, but look at that sky. Look at the yellow and blue, just transitioning into blue. And the beautiful color, blue color of the snow, and uh, catching some of that golden light now. This is just, this is what I came here for. This is absolutely what I came here for. So, uh, all right, going to take this shot here now. Shooting at uh, 160th of a second, f8, ISO 100, and uh, 70 to 200 millimeter lens at uh, 70 millimeters. Here we go. Stunning. <laughs> Stunning. If I don't get another photo this whole trip. Love it. Love it. Well, I have to tell you, everywhere you look, <laughs> there's a composition. And I've just been, like I said, running and gunning, getting as many compositions as I can. So I haven't really, you know, had much of an opportunity to record. And I'm only recording here on my Osmo Action because with the light as fleeting as it is, I didn't want to have to faff around with my Canon M50 and the light and the sound and all of that. So I'm just doing the kind of quick and dirty version here for you. But uh, I hope you can appreciate just how stunning and beautiful and wonderfully odd this is. All right, well, I think that does it for me from here for now. We're starting to lose the light. And uh, I have about a mile walk back up that hill. So, into the wind. So I'm gonna start making my way back to the vehicle. And uh, I guess I will check in with you later tonight, hopefully. From here, the skies will remain relatively clear, and uh, we'll get some nice aurora tonight. As night fell and the temperatures plummeted, I noticed how the headlights from the passing trucks 
swept across the trees on either side of the road as they broke over the hill. I took advantage of that light painting effect to illuminate a composition of the rising full moon through the trees before huddling patiently in our vehicles, hoping the skies would clear. How you doing, everybody? Well, it's been an interesting night here up at Hess Overlook, just south of the Arctic Circle. And uh, started out a little bit cloudy after all the snow we had today. Now it's a beautiful, clear sky right when we got here. Uh, the skies just lit up and everyone was frantically trying to get their gear together and uh, get out and capture the northern lights, including me. And uh, I'm really disappointed in the fact that I haven't been able to record, uh, you know, video of any of this, either time lapse or talking to the camera. It's simply been too dark, been too hectic, it's been too busy. Uh, you know, when the northern lights go off, they go off in a hurry, so I'm just frantically running around trying to get photos. So I apologize for that, but look at these photos. Here's what we got tonight here up at the Hess Overlook, just south of the Arctic Circle. Nights wear on in the next episode of our adventure as we wend our way through the Alaskan frontier, meet with some colorful locals, and get acquainted with the dog sled teams as we set off through an invigorating and stunningly beautiful trail through the White Mountains north of Fairbanks. From there, we head south to Denali National Park and Preserve. As the capricious northern lights continue to tease and titillate with all the flair of a vaudevillian fan dancer, only to bear it all in a surprise and unexpected cameo appearance. Then we make a brutally arduous three-mile hike through blizzard conditions to photograph and explore the spectacular Kastner Glacier ice caves. And then it's on to a relaxing finale with a dip in the soothing waters of the Chena Hot Springs. Uh, pretty great. <laughs> you won't want to miss the conclusion of this Alaskan adventure next time Behind the Door.